oversized jockey wheels. These are incredibly popular in the triathlon community. Go to any Ironman event or even a local triathlon, you're bound to see a ton of people with something like that on their bike. But given the cost of these upgrades, how much time can we reasonably be expected to save on race day? How much is something like this actually worth? Let's find out. Now, I'll be honest, when I first set out to make this video, my assumption was that the stock stuff on your bike is terrible, it's utter garbage, and it needs to be replaced as soon as possible. And that was, I mean, that, that was my feeling, that's what I told people, and I really believed that. But I, I had great reason to believe that. So let me show you. This piece right here, this is a jockey wheel off of probably like a 105 bike. It spins okay, but as you can see, not great. That's a low end part. So it's like, well, okay. This, let's put it back together, is off of a, Dur a brand new Dura-Ace uh, DI2 derailleur. I mean, that doesn't seem very good. And then, let's look at this. This is an aftermarket jockey wheel from Tax, a uh, Tax ceramic. Watch this. You see? So, I think this is where a lot of people, including myself, kind of get stuck. We see this and think, well, that's just absolutely terrible. I'm... I'm losing minutes on race day. I gotta get rid of these things, especially when something like this exists. But what does the data say? What does the actual numbers from a lab tell us? Well, thankfully we can turn to friction facts and we can have our answer. So looking at this graph, it sort of initially looks like, well, we're right. The stock stuff is absolute garbage and that's all those things over there. And then the aftermarket stuff is great and that's all over here and that's why the graph is so big. But the scale is not very big. So the scale is like only two watts. And the difference between the very best and very worst performing wheels are, I think it's like 1.33 watts, 1.337 or something. So it's not nothing, but it's also not a ton. But the most surprising thing for me, th this, this totally blew my mind. So this keeps coming apart. This Dura-Ace wheel, this thing that spins like this, and this tax wheel that spins like this. The difference in friction, according to friction facts, between those two things is less than one-tenth of a watt. It's nothing. It's literally the definition of nothing, which totally blows my mind because it, it intuitively seems like a ton. And so I understand how people see that and think, I have to replace this because I was in the same boat. But what about the oversized wheels? What's that worth? So one of the claims of these oversized systems is that they reduce the friction of your drivetrain by making your chain more efficient. They claim that by saying that the chain has to make less bends as it goes around your um, rear derailleur and cassette and everything. So because it's bending less, it doesn't have to go through as tight of angles because the wheels are bigger, that reduces the friction in your chain. And that's true. The, the less the chain bends as it snakes through here, the better. That, that's, not, that's not in question. That is absolutely accurate. The thing we want to know is you know, by how much. How much am I saving by having the chain bend less? Well, Jason over at Friction Facts did the test. And when you compare one of these oversized systems, his was a 15 tooth system, to the standard 11 tooth system on a Dura-Ace uh, derailleur, you save 0.25 watts. A quarter of a watt is saved by improving the way that the chain goes around these gears. There is a claim that that's under ideal conditions when your chain is well optimized. So if you don't have a very good chain, it's probably gonna be more, but I mean, it's not much. However, these oversized systems have one more trick up their sleeve. So the main job of this arm is to keep your chain in tension. And if you've watched the chain video that I did a couple weeks ago, link up here and down in the description if you haven't seen it, but the amount of tension in your chain directly affects how much friction there is in your chain. So less tension, less friction. And you can adjust the spring tension in this derailleur arm to 
put less tension on your chain. So if we add it all up, we have the uh, reduced friction from the bigger wheels, we have the better bearings, and we have lower chain tension. Jason Smith over at Friction Facts did the math, he ran the tests, and the, the combined effect of all of these things over a standard Dura-Ace cage is 1.67 watts. Now that we know how many watts you can expect to save, we can finally answer the question of how much time can you expect to save on a race day? Looking at bikecalculator.com over a 70.3 bike course, you can expect to save between 12 and 24 seconds with a one to two watt improvement. Now remember, the oversized jockey wheels didn't actually get you a full two watts, it's more like 1.5, so you're probably looking at somewhere between 15 to 20 seconds over that 70.3. Then I went to bikecalculator.com to use uh, one of my previous 70.3s to try to predict what one or two watts would save you. But unfortunately, you can only change things by a percentage of your total power, and the smallest unit that I can do in uh, Best Bike Split is three watts. So I can't, even, I can't even give you any of that data. Finally, this brings us to kind of the most painful part of the video, for me at least, and that is should you should you upgrade these guys? Should you get maybe just like another uh, non-standard 11 tooth or should you go all the way to the oversized system? And unfortunately, it doesn't seem like it's really worth it, which, which pains me so much because I'm a huge fan of the oversized systems. I love them. I, I had fully expected to buy a set for my TT bike before my Ironman this year. Um, obviously, Sarah has some on her bike. I like them, I'm a huge fan, and even with all of this data, I still get the sense that it's like this thing, I still don't like it. So, it's a hard place to be, and I completely understand how people have totally bought into the hype, because I'm right there with you. But the data doesn't really support the fact that it's all that helpful. So where does that leave us? Well, I think this is the best I can tell you. If you want one, go get it. It's not gonna hurt you, it's not gonna make you slower, and there is a benefit to be had. So if you have the money and you want one, go out and get it. Totally guilt-free, you earned it, go for it. However, if you don't have a set, if you can't afford it or you just don't wanna spend the money on it, rest assured you're not losing really anything maybe 20 seconds. But what do you think? Do you have an oversized system? Do you love it? Do you hate it? You know, are you surprised as I was with the results? Let me know in the comments down below. Let me know what you think and let's talk about it. And if this video is helpful, if you were surprised by any of the results, give it a big thumbs up so I know you appreciate it and we can make more of this content. We'll see you next week for another Workout Wednesday. We're gonna be talking about how to get the most accurate, reliable data out of your power meter for those FTP tests. All right, we'll see you later. Bye.